Number 10, Draculina. To be clear, when we talk about heroes you've never heard of, we're more talking about those that sit on the outskirts of the superhero fandoms. So you won't find them likely on the big screen or on DC's or Marvel's main teams like the Justice League, Avengers, or the X-Men. Instead, these are heroes who come from a more humble background by comparison. Some of them may have been simply forgotten due to just how long they've been around, whereas others typically are associated with smaller or even in some cases now defined defunct publishers. Coming from the world of fellow indie hero Vampirella, Draculina is sort of Ella's adopted sister and also kind of her ex-lover or ex one night stand. There have actually been at least two different Draculinas, possibly three at this point. One is Lilith's biological daughter and the biological twin sister of Vampy who is blonde. The other one, the one I'm focusing on, who was once Vampy's lover, became obsessed with her and was eventually adopted by Lilith to become the new Draculina. If you want to learn more about her and other Vampy Jason characters, Sacred Six is a pretty cool comic that I would recommend that you check out. Or you can learn more about this version of Draculina in the 2019 Vampirella series from Dynamite. Both of those series, by the way, are by Christopher Priest. Both Draculinas go by the name Victory, although the one we're talking about here was originally named Victoria, but the two do differ in terms of appearance and, like I said, blood relation. <laughs> blood relation in this context almost becomes a vampire pun. This new Draculina isn't exactly a vampire, by the way, but is armed with a demonic ring that basically grants her power power similar to one, allowing her to accurately play the part. Draculina is currently a property of Dynamite Comics. Number 9, Tony Chu. Tony Chu is a quirky and unique character, but still is ultimately a hero. And he even technically a superpower, so he would qualify as a superhero. Tony is a detective who possesses the unique power of Sibopathy. Whatever he eats, except for beets, he gains in-depth knowledge of. Being able to tell where all the ingredients that make it up came from, being able to taste everything about that ingested food. Tony uses this skill to basically solve murders mainly, sometimes even ingesting parts of victims or the accused, sometimes even ingesting parts of the victims or the suspects to learn more about the case and help solve it. He initially worked for the Philadelphia Police Department, but ultimately gets fired after they witness him eating part of a deceased suspect. He later is hired by the FDA. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, there are actually a lot more indie superheroes that I would love to tell you about as we dive into the world of unknown supers. So if you want to learn more, be sure to let us know by commenting below and giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Red Sonja. One of my favorite favorite lesser known heroes is Red Sonja. Red Sonja comes to us from the less sci-fi, more fantasy based world of sword and sorcery. She is an extremely gifted fighter, marksman, and sword bearer. Red Sonja, the she-devil, is said to have been given her name for, well, many different reasons. One such story as to how she got her name is that she left to seek out adventure and her fortune and became a mercenary, earning the name Red because of all the blood that she spilled. Red Sonja, while not a traditional hero, pretty much always stands up to those who are cruel and corrupt, often fighting for those who are oppressed, even against her better judgement. She has even fought death before in combat and won, allowing her to live on when she was on the brink of death. Red Sonja was once a character from the Marvel Comics wheelhouse, but currently calls Dynamite Comics her home. Number 7, Josephine. More commonly referred to as Joe, Josephine is the main character and hero of the Fatal series. More commonly referred to as Joe, Josephine is the main character and hero of the Fatal series, which comes to us from Image Comics. Fatal is a supernatural noir style comic created by the brilliant team up of writer Ed Brubaker and artist Sean Phillips. Seriously, I love these two together. Some might argue that Joe isn't really a hero as she's, well, she's a little bit selfish, but in focusing on uncovering the mysteries of her own power and in trying to save herself, she does inevitably save others. In the long run, at least. There are a lot of people that end up being sacrificed along the way in order for Joe to stand a chance in defeating her enemies in the end. And also, there are just straight up people being sacrificed along the way by her enemies who are attempting to track her down. So yeah, she, she kind of also gets a lot of people killed, but you know. It's not her fault! Joe's powers allow her to control all men who gaze upon her, with them being irresistibly attracted to her no matter who they are and no matter if she wants to influence them or not. Unless of course they are able to protect themselves against her influence with extremely powerful magic, which we only see from a couple characters really in the series. In other words, her power is pretty freaking strong. The only downside here, which is kind of the crux of it all, is that she can't fully control her powers, that is, she can't turn them off when she wants to, which ends up causing a lot of problems for Joe along the way, but I won't spoil any of that. Anyways, if you haven't read Fatal, it's now, I think, we're, it's gonna be 10 years old soon, so go and read it, hurry up! Came out I think in 2012. 
that's when it started. Number 6. King Mob King Mob is the leader of the Invisibles. He was once a horror writer who wrote under the pen name Kit Morrison. As the series The Invisibles is created by Grant Morrison, Mob is believed to be sort of a fictional stand in for Morrison himself. King Mob's legal name was Gideon Starozowski, and he struggles with his alter persona, especially troubled by how violent he, as King Mob, can be. King Mob is not only a leader who wields power in that sense, because he's a leader, but also has experience experience with firearms and weapons, is a skilled martial artist and fighter, is psychic, can time travel, and employs the use of chaos magic. So lots of cool things that he can do. Also if you haven't read The Invisibles, it is really trippy. Go read it. If you like The Matrix, you'll probably like The Invisibles. If you like The Matrix and if you like Doom Patrol, which of course is also Grant Morrison. Not The Matrix, Doom Patrol. Number 5. Twig Who is Twig? Only the cutest adventuring hero that you will ever meet. He is so endearing it makes me want to cry. Cry. Twig hails from his own self titled series and begins issue number one by starting off on a journey. He has taken up the position that once belonged to his father as the new placeling. What is a placeling exactly? In this magical land, it is a crucial hero who actively saves the world on basically a daily basis, going out and undertaking massive and arduous quests. Twig never really wanted to be a placeling, he wanted to be a chef, but as a result of what suddenly happened to his father, he happens to be really the only one suitable. And qualified to take up this position. Twig is just such a sweet character, like kind of a lovable goof, who does his best to live up to the responsibilities passed down to him. Also, the art in this book and the writing will not only make you fall in love with him, but also his best buddy, who resembles a banana slug, Splat, and honestly, the whole world, which kind of has like a dark crystal sort of feel to it. Twig is from Image Comics and made his first appearance in issue number one of his own series in May of 2022. Number four, Rogue Sun. Rogue Sun is one of the newer heroes that we've gotten in the massive verse. So yes, there are Radiance and Radiant Black, but they aren't the only heroes in Kyle Higgins' massive Massive verse. In the one shot Supermassive from February 2022, we began to crack the world wide open and were introduced to two completely new heroes who existed in the same sort of universe, but not really in the same series, if that makes sense, as Radiant Black. One of them was Rogue Son. Rogue Son is actually a legacy hero, and after the death of the original Rogue Son, Marcus Bell, his son, Dylan Siegel, is called upon to take his father's place. One major problem. Dylan isn't even sure he wants any of this, and he has a more than shaky relationship with his dad, even now knowing and understanding that all this time he was a superhero, and hence he may have had some somewhat valid reasons for his absence. And what's more, the power that he inherits also seem to come with a quite a bit of a catch in that regard. He kind of has to live with his dad's ghost in his head. Number 3. Inferno Girl Red Inferno Girl Red! This is a hero I've been waiting to see come out in the comics for some time, ever since I first saw her appear. Well, Inferno Girl Red has only just had her solo series start to come out, which is limited, with three issues existing in book one of her series, which I believe implies there will be multiple books to this series. Inferno Girl Red herself first appeared in the super massive one shot in February 2022, just like Rogue Sun. However, we wouldn't get her in her solo series, where we'd get to learn even more about Cassia Costa, the girl behind Inferno Girl Red, until January of 2023, with issue number one also coming from Image, where of course all the Massiverse is published and exists. In solicitation for the first issue, Cassia earns her place on this list as one of our newest ever superheroes from indie comics. She is literally described as, and I quote, the newest image comic superhero. In the first issue, we learn of how Cassia Costa was mysteriously chosen to become the new Inferno Girl Red after her world was turned upside down in an instant. It feels like we're taking the category of magical girl to a whole nother level and also mixing in some like fabulous future sci-fi stuff with it, which I love because I love both of those categories. Number 2. The Chosen One Vanish is just such a cool concept for a comic, and the main character is no exception to the amount of awesome involved here. If you love magical stories, this takes that idea and kind of just like turns it on its head. It answers the question of what happens to young heroes after the evil threat has been vanquished. But it takes a darker turn than most typical happy endings. In Vanish, we follow Oliver Harrison, who is that once young hero, the chosen one grown up. In a world now seemingly devoid of magic, he is haunted by the nightmares from his past and plagued by his own inner demons that he desperately tries at all costs to escape, all while seemingly living an otherwise mundane life. However, Oliver 
Silver isn't just a washed up former hero. He actually still has held on to a good amount of magic and skills from his past, and must use them to take action once more when a potential new threat appears on the horizon after more than about 20 years of peace, I'd say. Oliver's story is like what would happen to Harry in his adult years if he really didn't want to let go of his past glory and then learn that the Justice League was actually all made up of former Death Eaters. Number 1. Phaedra Essex Detective Phaedra Essex is the main character of the series Black Cloak. She definitely has an extremely interesting backstory beyond even just her present day story as a detective working in the last known city in all of the world, the city of Kyros. The land Phaedra and her story inhabits is kinda like a cyberpunk world meets a fantasy land where magic still exists but is mostly seemingly coveted by the royals of this land, the privileged few. Phaedra herself used to be a royal, or is a royal, but you know, one who has been exiled, so no longer acknowledging that status. The story only has one issue so far, so really, she's quite new when it comes to like her appearance and what's going on with her. So we don't know that much about her just yet, but what we do know is that she is determined and unafraid of putting herself in dangerous situations, that is for sure. Phaedra made her first appearance in Image Comics in Black Cloak issue number 1 in January 2023. Number 10, Wind. Wind is the name of the main character from this self-titled series, also of course named Wind. It comes from Boom Studios and was written by James Tinney in the 4th with art by Michael Dalyanos. Wind is a teenager hero who has always hidden the truth of his elven and magical heritage as a weird blood. His heritage grants him great power, power he's been hiding from his whole life in an attempt to fit in. Being made to believe that magic is dangerous and basically turns people into monsters or in some other way corrupts them. When he becomes too old to hide his pointed ears and who he is any longer, he is forced to either try and change or embrace who he really is. And in order to protect his friends against those who would hunt both him and them down, Wind ultimately embraces his magical side, unleashing powerful abilities. Wind has wings, can fly, and can communicate with forests like spirits or sprites. He also has, like many other teen heroes, the power of friendship, which usually means he ends up making friends with powerful allies. I would say if you love the world of Avatar, you might also end up falling in love with both the character Wind and his series. It reminds me of Avatar, at least, in like the best way. Number 9. Lord Fanny Lord Fanny is Hilda Morales, who is born as a boy but raised as a girl. She is a transsexual woman and one of the first trans heroes in comics. Lord Fanny was raised as a girl by her grandmother because only women in their culture could become witches and her grandmother was a powerful witch who wanted to pass on her knowledge and power to Fanny. Although Fanny herself did choose to be a girl, if that makes sense. Lord Fanny is a member of the Invisibles team and was created by writer Grant Morrison and artist Steve Yoel. The Invisibles was a comic series that existed as part of DC Vertigo imprint back when it was around. I miss Vertigo so much. The series began in 1994, and in issue 13, we'd learn more about Lord Fanny's origins and her very tragic backstory. Lord Fanny's such a cool character. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to learn about even more cool, lesser known indie heroes, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Quantum and Woody. You may have heard of Valiant's character Bloodshot, who recently got his own solo film, but what about all of their other superheroes? Quantum and Woody is a series and superhero duo from Valiant Comics. It was inspired by the superhero team up series Power Man and Iron Fist, but is a lot more bizarre. The series itself was written by Christopher Priest, with art actually by the artist who did Power Man and Iron Fist. Pretty cool. Quantum and Woody are adoptive brothers who, after years of being estranged, are brought back together when their father mysteriously dies. While trying to figure out what really happened to him, they stumble upon superpowers. The catch? They must touch their power bands at least once every 24 hours to not only keep their powers, but also keep from losing their lives as well, as they would then no longer exist if they didn't touch their band. Quantum's powers are more defense based, while Woody's are more offensive. Oh, and they also kind of have an animal sidekick, Vincent Van Goat, who is even more bizarre than he already sounds. Just trust me, I don't want to spoil anything, but Vincent Van Goat. What a goat. Number 7, Vampirella. But you can call her Vampy. Vampirella isn't a conventional hero by any means, but she definitely tries to do what's best by folks while still being a vampire from outer space, and at the same time with ties to Lilith and Hell. Overall, she's both complicated and also kinda super simple, and it's that weird blend of those two very different elements that 
I love about her. Vampy being an intergalactic vampire is super strong, fast, can fly because she actually has wings, and also has been shown to have access to advanced technology at times due to her ties to the planet Draculon. Vampirella is currently attached to Dynamite Comics, but was originally a property of Warren Publishing. Number 6 Savage Dragon Savage Dragon is a popular hero as far as the lesser known or indie heroes go, so if you haven't heard of him before, you might want to check him out. Initially, his origins were a mystery. All we knew was that he was a humanoid, green skinned, dragon like character who decided to fight as a police officer and hero, fighting against the criminal and mutant super freaks of Chicago. That's also in part because Savage Dragon initially had really bad amnesia in the comics, so he didn't actually even remember his own origin story at the time. Savage Dragon hails from Image Comics and was a originally introduced as simply Dragon before being known under the mantle of Savage Dragon. His powers include super strength and super healing. Number 5 Laura Wilson slash Persephone Laura Wilson is the main character of the Wicked and the Divine series from Image Comics. The series was created by writer Karen Gillan and artist Jamie McKelvey. In this story, gods come to life cyclically being kind of reincarnated. This is known as the Recurrence. Laura herself is obsessed with the gods and the Pantheon who are all of course re-emerging at the time. She wants nothing more than to be a god herself, at least that is what she thinks she wants until her wishes kind of come true. She is revealed to be Persephone, who is believed to be the final god to return during the recurrence. As Persephone, she can summon plants and vines and control them. She also seems to have some kind of control or influence over the underworld. Lori can also create fireballs and reveal to others past events, summoning visions of the past even if she was not present for those events. Number 4 Sludge Sludge is a hero or anti hero who comes to us initially from Malibu Comics and was created by writer Steve Gerber and artist Aaron Lepresti. Sludge was once Frank Hogue, a dirty NYPD police officer who accepted bribes in exchange for favors when it came to drug dealings. He was ordered by the crime boss he worked for, John Paul Marcello, to kill another likely dirtier cop. When Frank refused Marcello's request, Marcello had him killed instead. After being shot, a grenade went off, knocking him into a bucket of chemical waste. Who put that chemical waste there? The waste would merge with him after he was dumped into the sewers, turning him into the super heroic monstrosity Sludge. Sludge possesses a healing factor and super strength. He could also kill or mutate his opponents with just a touch. Kind of turns them into sludge. It's pretty it's pretty dark, really. Number 3, Radiant Yellow. We don't know that much about the newest Radiants, but we do know that they seem interested in protecting innocent people from whatever craziness is currently going on. Okay, hard to keep talking about all of this Radiant Black series without spoiling anything, but I'm once again, I'm gonna try my best. Radiant Yellow appears to be an older gentleman, and as far as I know, we don't really know his name yet. What we do know is that each Radiant seems to have their own power set. At least that's what we're being led to believe by the story and the imagery used. Used. It hasn't exactly all been laid out yet, which is honestly kind of what makes this series so much fun. There's so much we don't know. The mystery of it all. Radiant Yellow, however, seems to have powers based in perhaps light manipulation. To me, that's what it looks like the force blasts that they emit are based in. And it also looks to me like they can perhaps manipulate light to create illusions. That's just based on the imagery that's surrounding them in the comics. Like the other Radiants, Yellow isn't too experienced and doesn't seem to understand the full extent of their powers just yet. Radiant Yellow comes to us from the Radiant Black series, which belongs to Image Comics and is written by Kyle Higgins, who yes, was also the initial writer of the Power Rangers series, and it was also created by artist Marcelo Costa. Number 2 Exo Manowar Valiant Comics actually has a whole stable and universe filled with supers, including this one here, Exo Manowar. Exo Manowar is actually the name of the sentient armor that is tied to our hero in this series, Arik of Dacia, a Visigoth from the 5th century AD. Our Arik would end up being abducted by aliens and enslaved for years before he managed to escape. Arik learned of where his captive's armory was kept and basically ended up getting there and then getting the Exo Manowar suit. He then bonded with the suit and used that advanced tech to escape his captors. However, due to interstellar travel, by the time he arrived back on Earth, it was now the 20th century, basically modern day. Arik would have to adjust to this very different world and along the way would meet other superheroes from the Valiant Universe. That's right, there's not just two more, there's a whole bunch of them. Exo Manowar is a character created by writers Jim Shooter, Steve Englehart, and as well as artists Bob Layton and Barry Windsor Smith. 
Number 1. Black Hammer Black Hammer is Joe Weber, the title character of the Black Hammer series, written by Jeff Lemire with artwork by the amazing Dean Ormston. The Black Hammer series was made to be completely different from other more traditional superhero comics, but if I did have to compare Black Hammer to anyone from that more conventional world, I would liken him to Thor myself. Joe Weber inherited the hammer and powers of the former Black Hammer when he died, being transported to the realm of New World as soon as he himself had picked up the fallen hammer. There he learned that he was meant to become the new Black Hammer, replacing the fallen one as Starlock's new and most powerful warrior in the fight against Starlock's evil twin, the Anti-God. While being the title character, Black Hammer isn't actually the main character of this series. As we learn near the end of issue number one, Black Hammer sacrificed himself to save the world from the Anti-God and keep his fellow superheroes and friends alive. But what really happened to him, and just how and why are his teammates now seemingly trapped in the timeless and kind of eerie town of Rockwood. Well to find out you'll have to read on true believers. But honestly you should just go read Black Hammer because it's pretty great. Everyone go read all the Black Hammer things. It's like a whole universe now. Number 10, Aaron Slaughter. Aaron Slaughter is not quite as new as some of the others on this list, but I really wanted to shout him out and the series he's from, so I'm extending my definition of new for just that purpose. By about a year. He is from a series that I can't quite say the name of here on the YouTubes, so instead we are going to use an acronym. Is that cool with you? It's cool with me. We're going to use the acronym of SIKTC. What can I say? Um, it is a title that has the word killing in it, so there is a hint if you're looking to look it up. And it's about basically monster hunters and the people that they help as they travel around trying to eliminate vicious creatures who prey on innocents. Erica Slaughter is the first monster hunter we are in introduced to through the series and Aaron Slaughter is basically like kind of like her adoptive brother. He not only appears in SIKTC making his first appearance in issue number three I believe of that series but also now appears in the spin-off title House of Slaughter. SIKTC and Aaron Slaughter are both properties coming from Boom Studios. And friends before we move on to our next spot on this list if you love what we do here at Top 10 Nerd why not show us that you love us by clicking that like button. Why not show indie comics that you love them? Because let's be honest, they, they deserve it. They deserve a thumbs up. Give it to them. Number 9. Gunslinger Spawn Gunslinger Spawn is a hero who you may think of as old now, considering he first made a very brief first appearance on a cover back in 2002. But this Gunslinger that we're talking about here is not the same Gunslinger Spawn as the one that first appeared back in 2002, and later got his origin story shared in 2008. This Gunslinger Spawn is not old Job, but instead Jovi, who is much younger and also is believed to be Mexican in regards to his heritage. His initial appearance was a bit of a mystery, with people simply wondering how Gunslinger Spawn had made his way to the future. But in issue number three of the Gunslinger Spawn series, we learned that this Gunslinger Spawn was definitely not who we expected when he left his Spawn form, revealing a completely different face from the one we'd expected when we believed he was Old Job. While there is still much for us to learn about Jovi in regards to his past and his origin, it is implied that Old Job's Hellspawn powers were somehow passed on to him. This version of Gunslinger Spawn first appeared back in Spawn issue 308 in July of 2020. Later in Spawn Universe issue number one, we would see him featured in a short story at the end of the comic where he had no discernible face, which is what made people assume that he was the original Gunslinger Spawn we were first introduced to back in the early 2000s. Number 8. Ellipses Howell Ellipses Ellie Howell is one of the main characters from Crossover. Crossover is an ongoing image comic series that's currently on hiatus that jumps into the real world, telling the story of a literal crossover that happens between the comic book world and everyday Earth. As heroes and villains jump into the real world, chaos ensues and it's up to the main characters to find a way out of this mess and back home. Ellipses Howell is one of these main characters. She herself is actually a fictional character but a seemingly everyday everyday person, despite being fictional. She's also one of the last few people in her story who is considered a true believer when it comes to the world of fiction and superheroes. She dresses up as one and has recently been seen in the comics wielding a sword that allows her to create portals into other worlds. I don't know about you, but I'd say that both her intentions and her ability to wield a badass portal creating sword makes her pretty heroic. Also Ellie has a really cool name that definitely implies she is the one who has the symbolic thematic power to deal with 
this problem best. She was named Ellipses because her mom believed Ellipses represent the idea of the impossible and the great unknown, and that her daughter would be capable of anything. Ellipses makes her first appearance in Crossover issue number one, which was released through Image in November of 2020. Number seven, Radiant Black. Radiant Black is now a couple uh, different people, but originally it was Nathan Burnett who made his first appearance in Radiant Black issue number one and adopted the persona of. Radiant Black, eventually brainstorming up his superhero name afterwards with his best friend Marshall. Radiant Black is basically like Power Rangers but for adults, and a series that involves a lot more mystery than the Power Rangers premise, which is pretty front loading when it comes to the lore behind the Power Rangers in terms of their origin, where their powers come from, and why they were entrusted with these powers in the first place. In Radiant Black, many of these questions go unanswered to start, with us being given little hints along the way as to what is really going on with these Radiants and their hosts. Honestly, it's a brilliant series, and one that has not only given us a super cool new hero in Radiant Black, but has also given us a super cool new cast of heroes with the Radiance, and beyond, a super cool new universe to explore with the Massiverse. Radiant Black issue number one was released via Image in February of 2021. Number six, Berserker. The character that we initially only know as B is the protagonist of the series Berserker from Boom Studios. He is an ancient warrior half god, half mortal, who is fighting to learn the truth of his origins and also to learn how to finally put an end to his life, as he is constantly driven towards bloodshed. He ends up accepting a mission to fight for the United States, participating in crazy, perilous, and deadly battles in exchange for this information on his own life. This series was written by Matt Kent in collaboration with Keanu Reeves, which was where the hype came from for it, but it seems to have been a series that really delivered on this hype because a lot of people love it. While I have yet to read it myself, I have talked to those who have and there are quite a few out there who just really love this series. It's definitely one that I need to read. The first issue of Berserker was released in March of 2021 and featured the mysterious Bloodthirsty Bee, who we'd later come to know as Berserker. And it's a property from Boom Studios. Number five, Witchblade. Witchblade is a hero who comes from Top Cow Productions. Mainly we've known Witchblade as Sarah Pizzini, but the Witchblade has belonged to many other powerful women throughout the years. The Witchblade is an ancient mystical artifact that typically binds itself to a host who can then wield and use its powers at will. It can be more or less powerful depending on the host, but in this case, since Sarah is one of the most well-known hosts of the Witchblade, we're gonna basically base the ranking on her abilities. The Witchblade can be used to summon mystical armor, which can cover the entirety of its host's body, though typically most are not skilled enough to actually summon that much armor, and instead are usually only covered in little pieces of armor as a result. Hence why you see that Witchblade art and she's like, not really covered in much. This armor grants the wear in vulnerability, but even if its host is harmed, it also grants the power to heal. Aside from creating armor, the Witchblade can also be used to create weapons on the fly. It also increases its host's strength and endurance. Sarah herself was also a trained NYPD detective prior to becoming the host for the Witchblade, so she also brings her skills as an officer and detective to the table. Number four, Luther Strode. Luther Strode is the main character in the Strange Talent of Luther Strode series, a series that hails from Image Comics. Luther ends up acquiring powers that enhance his strength, durability, speed, and combat skills after receiving a mail order exercise program known as the Hercules Method. Luther's powers, however, only create more harm than good in his life and lead to a lot of death, much of it happening as a result of his own involvement. Try as he might to try and do good with it. While not a conventional hero, Luther definitely fits the bill of an anti hero or more accurately, tragic hero archetype, with everything going awry, no matter his intent. He's also someone I would personally love to see take on the hero who made our number two spot. Number three, Radiant Black. Radiant Black is Nathan Burnett, or was Nathan Burnett. Nathan to start, anyways. Going to try not to spoil this series because it's one that I think we should all be reading, so I'm just gonna leave it at Nathan for now. Radiant Black is the first hero we meet in this series. In issue number one, Nathan ends up getting the powers of the Black Radiant, which basically means he has the powers of a black hole. Radiant Black can manipulate gravity and also becomes super dense with this power set. The downside for this hero is being new it means that he's pretty inexperienced in the comics thus far. However, gravity manipulation manipulation as a power set is insane, which is how he ranks so high up on this list despite his inexperience. Radiant Black hails from Image Comics, and like I said, if you have not checked out this series and gotten to know the Radiance yet, well, you definitely need to change that and you need to do so. It's like Power Rangers, but possibly cooler, and I say that having much respect and much love for Power Rangers. So that's not a snub at all, it's just like, it's really good. 
Number 2 Bulletproof You know Invincible, but do you know Bulletproof? Fans of the comic series likely do, but if you just became an Invincible fan via the animated series, then this isn't a character that you'd be familiar with just yet. After all, at this point we've only had one season so far, so it's very likely Bulletproof will appear in the series just not until a bit later on. Bulletproof is Zandel Rudolph. He got his powers as a result of his brother using him as basically a science experiment, as his brother Tyrone was actually obsessed with superpowers. Zandel would end up getting powers as a result of this mad science, while his brother would end up dead. Bulletproof also goes on to take up the invincible mantle at one point, filling in for Mark when he is off world. Zandel's powers are based on energy absorption, which I think is one of the strongest power sets to have personally. Bulletproof, like other heroes in the Invincible universe, Universe comes to us from Skybound, which is an imprint of Image Comics. Number one, the darkness. The darkness is an ancient elemental force that takes up residence in a host, granting them special powers. One of the most famous hosts that we have come to know as the darkness is Jackie Estacado. The powers that Jackie wields are similar to what you'd expect from some kind of demonic force. They're also honestly comparable to Venom's power set from Marvel Comics. At least I see a lot of similarities there. The darkness gives you access to a sort of mystical armor. Which can be summoned at will. It also grants the user a healing factor, shapeshift abilities, and through them also the ability to fly via wings that you can create. Jackie as the darkness can also create dark tendrils, which he can also turn into weapons. And he can also summon entities known as darklings. While more of an anti-hero due to his methods, Jackie as Staccato is still a hero in the sense that he generally fights on the side of good. The darkness hails from Top Cow Productions. And if you do know the Witchblade, you probably know the darkness, or vice versa.